Salut! Hey everyone, welcome to my eighth Q&A video. Sorry it's taken so long to come out, I think my brain is subconsciously trying to get me to break a new record for how long it takes me to release these Q&As. So by now you should know the drill. Sorry if I mispronounced your name or didn't get to your question this year. I do these Q&As every year, so there's always another chance. Alright, let's get right into it. That Wild SD40-2 asks, What's your favorite BNSF predecessor railroad? Santa Fe, but Burlington Northern is a close second. I both like a lot of their locomotives, their paint schemes. BN had some pretty cool commuter trains too, but Santa Fe has just a bit more of an edge over them. I'm also a bit biased towards their streamliners too. Best railroad paint scheme in your opinion? You're probably expecting me to say Amtrak, but nope, it's actually Canadian National. Their modern livery, anyway. I think it works on practically any locomotive they have, and it's just a very clean and modern looking design. But Amtrak Phase 3 still comes close. And the New Haven livery by Herbert Matter or the McGinnis scheme. What's your favorite Gary's Mod map? Evo City and Construct. Evo City because it's been used in a lot of popular Gmod animations and there's a lot you can do on the map, but you can never really go wrong with a bit of classic Construct. Also that one TTT Minecraft map, there's a couple of them, I'll just put them on screen, I can't think of the name of them, but I've had countless hours of fun playing with friends in TTT on those maps too. Have you ever played American Truck Simulator? If so, what's your opinion on it? I like it, it's a pretty good simulator. I've, I've also played Euro Truck Simulator too. I haven't played American Truck Sim in a long time, at least a good few years. I know there's a bunch of new DLC in like states they've released for the game. I don't have any of them though, but I've been considering getting back into it. The online mode is pretty cool too. What's your favorite game from each Nintendo system? Alright, the original NES, Super Mario Bros., the Super Nintendo, Super Mario World, the N64, Mario 64, the GameCube, Sonic Adventure, or Mario Sunshine. The Wii, Super Mario Galaxy, by a long shot. Wii U. I didn't play it on the Wii U, but I played it on the Switch, but it's still a Wii U game, so I'm gonna count it. Mario 3D World. The Switch, Super Mario Odyssey. Now I'll do the handhelds. Game Boy, Mario Land 2, Game Boy Advance, Sonic Advance 3, DS, Sonic Rush, and the 3DS, Mario 3D Land. Big Iron asks, what's your most favorite heritage unit and what's your least favorite heritage unit? Favorite is Norfolk Southern 1066, it's the New York Central one. And my least favorite is Canadian Nationals Wisconsin Central Unit. There's a couple of problems with this thing. For starters, it uses the typeface Ariel instead of Helvetica like the actual Wisconsin Central units used. They're pretty similar looking, but the main thing is the text isn't bold enough. And now for the elephant in the room with this unit is why does the stripe just go up and then above the radiator vents? Why? What the hell were they thinking? I mean, I get it's to avoid painting over the vents, because I guess it's kind of harder to do that, I think. But that hasn't stopped Canadian National or several other railroads from doing that before. I'm not sure why this one had to be the exception. It just looks so ugly. Don't get me wrong, I'm still glad these heritage units exist. It's just the Wisconsin Central one was a really poor execution of it. Santa Fe 669 asks, if you could remove any weapon from TF2, what would it be and why? The Phlogistonator for Pyro because I think it encourages a really unskillful and lazy play style, aka W plus M1. I don't even really have so much of a problem with the whole guaranteed crits thing when the Pyro taunts, because as soon as he's done getting that little uber effect from the taunt, you can just headshot him before he even has a chance to kill anyone with those crits, or backstab him or just kill him before he can get to anyone else. Like, Pyro has a flare gun and his melee for a reason. I don't think people should just be WM1ing everywhere. If you couldn't tell already, I don't like Pyro. If you could design a paint scheme for a certain railroad, what would it be and why? Amtrak because they haven't really had a matching paint scheme since Phase 4 or 3. Amtrak Phase 5 doesn't look too bad, and I know the Midwest stuff has its own design, but stuff like this just looks goofy to me. The fog is coming.
The Railfan6499 asks, Did you watch Bochi the Rock yet? Yeah, I did when it first came out and I really enjoyed it. I think it puts a nice, expressive, and humorous twist on kind of the slice of life comedy genre, especially with all of the animation and like visual gags. Those were all really well done and creative. The music from the show is pretty good actually, the animation is pretty good. The art style isn't really anything too unique, but I think a lot of the humor and stuff like that makes up for it. Any sports you like to play? If you count bowling, but that's about it, I'm not really into sports. What TV show did you watch when you were a kid? Jeez, I, I watched a lot. Thomas and Friends, Max and Ruby, Spongebob, Chowder, Misadventures of Flapjack, The Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Drake and Josh, iCarly, My Life as a Teenage Robot, and quite a few others that I saw maybe in passing or just when nothing else was really on. Opinion on the New York City MTA subway. The history of it's pretty interesting and the era when it was covered in graffiti in the 70s into the 80s was definitely pretty cool to look into. Pensy Railfan asks, What's your favorite current European railroad logo? The Great British Railways Double Arrow. I think it just looks the most like a railroad logo because it obviously is meant to look like a set of railroad lines. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go watch my video about it here. Albert Ding 2553 asks, What anime do you enjoy? My favorite is still Eurocamp, but some other ones I like and could personally recommend are Kaguya-sama Love is War, Serial Experiments Lane, Cowboy Bebop, Nichijo, Azumanga Daio, Spy X Family, Gunsmith Cats, Love Live, and Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. There's a handful of others that I like, but those are just some of my favorites. What toy trains have you had in the past, and which ones do you still have today? Jeez, I've... <laughs> seems like I've had all manner of toy trains in the world. I've had Tommy Thomas stuff, Trackmaster, Wooden Railway, Take Along, Take and Play, Ertl, a whole bunch of HO scale stuff, Lionel. I've got mountains of boxes upon boxes in the storage unit with all my toy trains in them. <laughs> Have you been on Day Out with Thomas excursions as well as carnival trains pulled by CP Huntington's? I went to a Day Out with Thomas event in Texas in 2004, and then another one at the Huckleberry Railroad in 2008. I haven't been on any carnival trains though. Tank or tender engines? Tender engines. Of all the wheel arrangements of a steam locomotive, which one do you like the most and which name of that locomotive suits your favorite? 462 Pacific. I think there's been a lot of great Pacific designs out there, and, and I think it's cool how a lot of them are mixed traffic too. They look good hauling both freight and passenger. Mooter asks, Is there a video you want to make, but there's either not enough info on the topic out there, or not enough motivation to make it? There's a lot of train history videos I would love to make, it's just there's not enough free to use pictures or videos out there for me to put into the my video. Most of the photographs and videos you see in my history videos are public domain or fair use, stuff like pictures taken by a locomotive builder or railroad company, old railroad promotional films, news clippings, stuff like that. Like there could be plenty of pictures or videos about a certain locomotive or railroad or whatever, but if they're not public domain or listed as free to use by the owner of them, I usually try to ask permission if I can, but a lot of times there's either no contact information or even if I do send them an email, I never get a response back, so it's like not much else I can do really. For example, I want to make a video about the Port Huron and Detroit Railroad. It was a short line in Michigan, but pretty much all the pictures of the railroad are private collections, and the majority of those people don't have any contact info. So it would be kind of hard for me to contact each and every single person if they even have info in the first place to make a video about the line. Ignoring any and all realism, what Mario game do you want Nintendo to make or remake the most? Something you wouldn't expect to see announced at all, but you really want. Easily, I want a Mario and Sonic collab platformer. None of the Olympic stuff, I want a platformer game with Mario and Sonic together in it. I know this is something that a lot of people have wanted for eons, but it just sounds like such a good idea because 
you have Mario with the jumps, Sonic with the speed, and have them team up where you can use like teamwork moves like in the Mario and Luigi RPG games. Like maybe have Sonic run over like a bit of water or something like that. Have Mario jump a great height that Sonic probably wouldn't be able to get to. Or you could have something like Mario throws Sonic in the air and Mario uses his hammer, hits Sonic and sends him flying like a baseball or something like that to break through something or attack some enemies. I think there's a lot of potential with an idea like this, and I think Nintendo and Sega are just sitting on potential money here. CoasterFan2105 asks, If you could make a new heritage locomotive for any railroad with any paint scheme and any locomotive type, what would it be? I would like to see a Canadian National SD75i painted in the old Maple Leaf livery. Trist's channel asks, Mario and Train Simulator. Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! Have you considered doing a video about American influence on foreign steam? I think it could be a pretty interesting topic. There, There is a good few interesting steam engine designs out there that are very obviously American, but they have like a couple of like foreign like parts or design quirks about them. Rousey Gaming 46 asks, "Play Pizza Tower or planning on buying it?" <laughs> That's how you can tell this video is taking a long time to come out because Pizza Tower was still the talk of the town. I did play it, and it was a very enjoyable experience. I loved how expressive Pepino was. There's a lot of charm to the game. The music was great. It was pretty challenging, a little bit on the annoying side at times, but there was a lot of mechanics and it could be a little bit overwhelming at the start, but once I got used to it, it was a very enjoyable experience to just blast through the levels as fast as I can. But yeah, it was a very charming and well done game, some amazing sprite work. I can't believe how expressive it is. Overall, I'd probably give it like a 8 or 9 out of 10. Are you planning on continuing the older train series, or will you make a brand new one? I talked about this a little bit in my 10-year video. Granger Rail Tales was supposed to be the definitive successor to Marysville, Cass City, and Hiawatha Trilogy. But since then, my video priorities have shifted over to history-oriented content, and episode 3 for Granger Rail Tales is still in my files, I just never finished it. Maybe I will finish it, I don't know. The problem is, with train series, is everyone's schedule is different, and not everyone has time to get voice lines in. And as everyone gets older, that gets increasingly harder to do because everyone seems to get more busy. I don't really see myself bringing back any of the old ones, or really continuing Granger Rail Tales, but time will tell, I guess. Have you watched Emesis Blue yet? No, but I've heard it's very good. Even though I don't like horror, I'm kind of interested to see what a TF2 horror film is like. Have you thought of visiting other states? Well, apart from Michigan, because that's where I live, I've been to Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Wisconsin, and New York. I would like to visit like Pennsylvania, Maine, Massachusetts, New York again. Mainly the Northeast just because I love the history, the architecture, and I've also always wanted to see the Northeast Corridor. Do you plan on getting more pets? I pretty much would always like to have a cat in my life. Maybe two or even three. I've always liked cats just because they're, well of course they're cute, but I also like how they're a bit more independent and not so high energy. I don't dislike dogs or anything, I've just always been more of a cat person. I've always enjoyed watching cats and seeing how they run after their toys, like when I throw one of my cat's Emma's toys off and she just runs after it at the speed of sound, it's so funny. GP30 Fomer asks, What would you say is your favorite video or other project you've worked on? How Chicago Became America's Rail Capital, the Railroad Graffiti video, and the New Haven History of a Design video. All of those were a lot of fun to work on, just stuff that I was always kind of interested in, and I do wish the New Haven video got more views, because all the other History of a Design videos got some pretty good views, but the New Haven one, not so much for some reason. The Trains of video game series is also really fun to make, too. I love being able to combine trains and video games into one video. Dat1TrainDude asks, Opinions on Brightline. 
I think it's a pretty good stepping stone for like independent passenger operations in the US. I'm always in favor of more trains and light rail and whatever else. I just hope Brightline serves as an inspiration for other rail companies to pop up in some urban or suburban areas. Even rural areas too if they can make it work. I haven't ridden it myself, but it sounds like it's a pretty decent operation. Do you like living in Michigan? If not, where would you live? I love Michigan. I love living along the water. I love how we get all four seasons. It's not the most scenic place. You kind of have to go to the Upper Peninsula if you want any kind of unique looking scenery. The cities are great. There's some really interesting history. If I didn't live in Michigan though, I'd probably want to live somewhere around Chicago or the Northeast Coast. Talgo8 Cap- <coughs> KC-CW asks, Do you like the Missouri Pacific Railroad? I don't really know much about it, but it seems cool. How many Fumos do you own? I have three, two Sakias and one Reimu. Which GE-7 is the best looking? C30-7. Favorite Toho character? Sakia is my favorite, but I also like Reimu and Marissa. Opinions on Rail Wars the anime if you've seen it. I know what it's about, but I haven't seen it. Azumanga Dayo is cool, don't you dare disagree. Well, I mean, I'd be hard pressed to disagree with you, it's one of my favorite anime. <laughs> PepsiFan6663 asks, If you were the president of Amtrak, what services would you bring back and what changes would you want to make for the company? Apart from a consistent paint scheme, I would say, add more options for the food and drink menus on both the short and long distance trains. Lower the ticket prices a bit because god it seems like it's expensive sometimes. Get rid of the chargers and refurbish the P42s. And I would say try to create more services that connect suburban cities more. I don't mean so much like a commuter train, but stuff that maybe connects one long distance route with another, like in the middle somewhere. The Amtrak Connects Us thing basically has what I'm asking for, but I would just like to see some more routes is all. Tweetsy Railroader asks, What do you like about Rinshima as a character? I guess I find her just kind of relatable. She's not so high energy, she's definitely an introvert. I like her overall design and her hair is blue and blue is my favorite color. She likes to travel and so do I. Yeah, the main thing though is I think she's the most relatable anime character to me personally. If you've seen the Eurocamp movie, what are your thoughts on it? Surprisingly I haven't seen it yet. I Even if it's a franchise I like, a lot of times I have a hard, hard time motivating myself to sit down and watch a hour and a half, two hour long movie. I, I don't know why, I just do. Eventually I will get around to it and I will share my thoughts on it. What locations in Michigan would you recommend for rail fans visiting the region for the first time, barring the main line? There's the Indiana Northeastern, Lake Superior and Ishpeming in the Upper Peninsula. You can see some iron ore stuff up there. There's Lake State Railway, Great Lakes Central, and I'll put up some more specific locations on screen here. Favorite song from each Love Live group? These ones. Thoughts on steam railroads at theme parks? They're pretty cool. The color schemes are usually always unique and pretty interesting looking. I've ridden the train at Cedar Point, but that's about it. Oh, and thanks for your comment below all your questions. I definitely appreciate it. Kaizi asks, what's your favorite anime and why? I've already said Eurocamp is my favorite, but I've never really explained why. In short, it's just a comfy and chill show to watch. There's no big overarching plot with some big twist at the end. I'm not saying more action-packed shows are boring, because I, I like those a lot too, but I'm just saying that Eurocamp is a nice change of pace. It's pretty chill, it's pretty funny at times, you get to learn a bit more about camping and Japan along the way. I like all of the characters and their designs. The music's really good, I, I listen to it in my spare time on Spotify sometimes. Yeah, I would highly recommend it to anyone. I've shown it to people who aren't really super into anime or shows like Eurocamp, and they've all liked it. The, the first episode's on YouTube, by the way, so if you want to give it a chance, go watch it there. Mr. Yield 3 asks, What happened to Amtrak Guy 1 through Amtrak Guy 364? Uh, died in a car crash. Cyrax101 asks, do you think America is starting to understand train travel? The answer is yes and no.
I would say yes, because it does seem like there's been an increase in the interest of bringing passenger trains to cities and connecting more suburban or rural areas. I know a lot of people who complain about the traffic and having to drive and it's like, that could be fixed with like a reliable and frequent commuter rail train. Apart from that though, I know there's been some transit upgrades going on for like Metra and the CTA in Chicago. Brightline existing at all should prove that Americans are getting more interested in train travel. And urban centers getting tram networks like Detroit and Milwaukee I think should show that there is room for rail projects. In short though, I would say yes because it does seem like city officials are wanting to invest more in passenger rail and, and Amtrak Connects Us is trying to bring back or bring new Amtrak trains to all sorts of cities in the US. However, I would also say no because it does seem like there's a handful of city officials who just want to add another lane to the highways and are completely allergic to trains. <coughs> Elon Musk, <laughs> what? Personally, I think if the inner urban railroads were still around today, we wouldn't have as much traffic or they would just serve as a supplementary way of getting around. Especially in today's day and age, I think the inner urbans, if they were still around, like in a large scale network, would have been really helpful. But to sum it all up, I would say mostly yes, that America is starting to understand passenger rail and get back into trains. When do you believe the Cascade region will get high speed rail? I'm just gonna throw out a wild guess and say the 2030s or 40s. Do you think Amtrak should have another tier of service on long distance routes? Something like affordable luxury in which it's still like coach, but with a little more space so the seat can lay all the way down. Um, I don't know really, I think Amtrak's current classes are fine. Jade's the GTA Railmaster 9699 asks, Do you like any other band other than the Beatles? I like a lot of music, pretty much most music from like the 1930s up to the modern day I generally like with a few exceptions. But other stuff I like is I like all the Beatles like solo work, but also I've been listening to a lot of Caro Caro Bonito, Baby No Money, Young Gravy, Michael Jackson, Electric Light Orchestra, Billy Joel, Gordon Lightfoot, and Elton John. I also like stuff like lo-fi, vaporwave, stuff that's pretty chill to listen to. Do you like the Rolling Stones? If so, what is your favorite album and song? Favorite albums probably Tattoo You, and my favorite song is Start Me Up. Platform One Productions asks, what do you think of Metra's new ST70 Mac H's? Very unexpected. The ST70 Mac is literally the last locomotive I would think of for a commuter train. I'm not really huge on the idea of them, it just sounds really silly to me. They don't really look all that great pulling commuter cars if you ask me, but I guess time will tell whether or not they're reliable or not. Are there any foreign locomotives you'd like to see an American railroad purchase for use in the states? I think some DMUs or EMUs could be useful in like suburban or more rural areas where there not might be as many passengers. Pog Pacer asks, why did you change from a P42DC to an F40PH? Was it a change in favor or just to modernize the channel as in a better looking logo? Yeah, it was really just to modernize my channel and create a more recognizable brand or icon for my channel, I guess. And I picked the F40 just because it's my favorite locomotive of all time. I just figured a stylized illustration I made of an F40 would be more recognizable than just some random old picture of a P42 I took. Marshed Workshops asks, From all eight mainline Mario Kart games, what are your favorite Nitro tracks from all of them? Super Mario Kart Donut Plains 3, but a lot of the tracks feel the same to me. 64 is Royal Raceway and Calamari Desert. Super Circuit Riverside Park. Double Dash Mushroom Bridge. DS Waluigi Pinball. Wii Coconut Mall or Maple Treeway, but a lot of the tracks in that game are super good. Mario Kart 7, Woohoo Loop, Neo Bowser City Can Kiss My Ass, looking at all of you people who vote for it on 200cc and Mario Kart 8 Online, and Mario Kart 8, my favorite is Toad Harbor. Aina Saito Supremacy? No. Comrade Kalen Productions 8440 asks, what fictional railroads have you created? I've got the Michigan Shoreline Southern, which I haven't really done much with, and the Michigan Central, which is unrelated to the real-life Michigan Central that became part of New York Central. 
Both of these I've made in trains and right now I'm focusing on trying to make a route for the Michigan Central. I have some locomotive reskins, some coaches, I want to eventually make some rolling stock for it. I don't have too much of the route done, but eventually I would like to make like a fake kind of promotional video for it, like a really cheesy 90s, 2000s railroad promotional video for it, and just basically explain what the railroad's about, its history, and the equipment, and so on and so forth. So when that time comes, I'll show it off a bit more. What is your favorite narrow gauge engine? I'd say the DNR GW K27, but I also like some of the smaller Porter tank engines too. Thoughts on CPKC? To be honest, I never expected it to go through. I'm just hoping that it proves out to be a positive investment and works out for everyone in the end. It is kind of sad to see these two independent railroads which have been around for over a hundred years, kind of their image sort of begin to slowly fade away. But I mean, what, what can you really do? It's just a bunch of corporate stuff. The new livery they have though is all right. Rexzilla9900 asks, what would you recommend for other people thinking of making digital posters or any other kind of drawing content? The main thing, of course, is going to be practice. But apart from that, I would highly recommend looking up reference images and make an art reference folder of stuff that you like and could lead to inspiration for your own pieces later on. When I first started drawing as a kid, I often tried to replicate cartoon and video game styles that I liked. And the same thing with graphic design when I started doing that in 2018. I took a big interest in Art Deco, Precisionist, Bauhaus, and Modern Day Minimalism. Replicating all of those styles eventually morphed into my current style I use for drawing characters and the graphic design stuff you see for like my YouTube icon, the thumbnails, and all the graphics you see in my videos. Another thing I would say is don't force yourself to draw or design anything when you're not really feeling like it because then otherwise it's just gonna feel like a chore and it's no fun at all. And if you've been working on something for a while and it feels like you're just not making any headway or you're hitting some art block, go take a break and do something else or just take a step back and then come back with it with a fresh pair of eyes and see if you notice anything new or have any other ideas. Doing that has helped me a lot. Always good to take breaks. Another thing would be to look up a lot of YouTube tutorials. Make what you want to make and have some fun and creativity with it. What is your most favorite train catch you've gotten to see? I think it would be kind of hard for me to narrow down just one, but a few of them that I'm really happy to have seen are the Amtrak exhibit train back in 2015, a Bessemer and Lake Erie SD40-3 leader on a local CN train in Wisconsin, Sioux Line 1003, the Metra CB&Q Heritage Unit, and another one that always stands out to me is it was in Prince, West Virginia. Amtrak's Cardinal was leaving the station and it was blowing the horn for a railroad crossing and it echoed throughout the mountains and like it sent chills up my spine and my arms and I'm pretty sure I said this exact thing in the previous Q&A but I'm going to say it again because that's just how much of an impact it left on me. Favorite game of 2022. Sonic Frontiers. That is all my questions, and what does this say? Insert poorly executed Angry Birds jump scare here. Harrison La Time Traveler asks, What do you hope to see when Amtrak makes its order to replace its long distance fleet? I'm hoping the interiors of the cars feel a bit more bright and modern like the Siemens Venture Coaches and the Viewliner 2s. I think the seat structure is fine, a more luxurious looking like dining car or observation cars would be pretty cool too. Something that kind of harkens back to like the Santa Fe high level cars and try to recapture some of that elegance of like old timey passenger travel while keeping it modern. If you could bring one steam locomotive class back from extinction, which one would it be? New York Central Hudson. I'm sure you all saw that coming. Another one would be a Chicago and Northwestern E4. Which city do you think more desperately needs any sort of rail transport, like an Amtrak connection, commuter rail, light rail, or rapid transit? Easily, Detroit. I know Detroit's been a car city and all that, but that doesn't mean there isn't room for passenger trains. Detroit's had a really turbulent history with transit. 
At one point, there was tons of passenger trains coming into all the train stations in the city. I do think Detroit desperately needs some kind of proper commuter rail system. They haven't had one since SEMTA. My train came close, but that ended up falling apart. But if the city had an actual commuter rail system that connected up with cities like Port Huron, Flint, Lansing, Grand Rapids, Ann Arbor, even Toledo or something like that, I think that would be incredibly beneficial for the city and it would bring more people and business into the downtown center shopping around there because there's so many people I hear personally say, I don't want to drive to Detroit or I hate driving down in Detroit. A commuter rail system could solve all of that as long as it's reliable, has a decent frequency, and if it's decently priced. I'm just hoping the whole A2TC commuter rail project works out and the Detroit Amtrak station rebuild. And if Detroit ever does get commuter rail, I would hope it has some kind of Amtrak connection. Have you played Left 4 Dead or Left 4 Dead 2? I've played Left 4 Dead 2 with friends and it's a lot of fun. And the Steam Workshop mods make it all the better. I mean, why wouldn't you want to shoot up a bunch of zombies as Luigi? Scion asks, Has there ever been a favorite place for you to rail fan before? One of them I would say is LaGrange, Illinois. It's a really nice neighborhood. Some other places would be Durand and Port Huron, Michigan, Canal Street in Chicago, and Franklin Park, Illinois. Do you want to say something for the audience? DFW Rail Videos asks, What's your all-time favorite horn from Leslie and Nathan Airchime? An Amtrak K5LA or a K5L, and for Leslie it would be an RS3L. What are your opinions on Trains 22 in the subscription-based model? I do not like it. Because here's the thing, when Trains 22 came out, it was essentially Trains 2019, and with 22, you got a couple of new features, but the rest you had to subscribe to get them, like Surveyor 2.0 and some other stuff. There was really no like graphical or engine improvements, it's still laggy and unoptimized as ever. There's like, there's gotta be a better way to monetize this game than a subscription model. Because with the thing with Railworks or Train Simulator, at least it seems like it's gotten smoother to run and it crashes less over the years. Trains just seems like it keeps getting worse in terms of the optimization. I can run tons of other far more graphically intensive games just fine at high settings, but the moment I turn Trains' graphics up, my computer just has a stroke and dies. If you could improve Amtrak, creating new routes, bringing back old routes, serving new cities, etc., how would you improve it? Some other stuff I would say is just more Amtrak everywhere, connect as many cities as possible in commuter lines, and have the Amtrak website send you like an email or text notification when a seat opens up on like a sold out train. Jason Phillips 5412 asks, What's your opinion on all of the new CSX Heritage units? They're Definitely not what I expected. I honestly expected them to go like the Norfolk Southern route, where it would be like a fully painted unit. But the concept they're doing where it's like CSX is like pulling the past behind them and bringing it into the future is, I guess it's kind of neat. Um, I, I don't really mind it too much. I'm glad they're making an effort at the very least. Some of them look a little awkward. Overall, I, I think they're fine. LFA Searcher asks, when did you discover anime? I can remember seeing like little clips and memes of like old shows around like 2008 or 2009 when I first started using the internet on my own, but I didn't really seriously start watching it until high school. Is there any commuter railroad you like other than Amtrak? Yeah, I think Metra and New Jersey Transit are pretty cool. Metra is my favorite though. Favorite TF2 character? In terms of personality, heavy, and gameplay is Scout. Which Fallen Flag Railroad would you like to see before they went bankrupt? I'd say the Milwaukee Road. Stuff like the Pacific Extension and some of their commuter trains would be pretty cool to see. That Trains Guy asks, Would you ever release any of the routes and modules and trains from your YouTube series such as Granger Rail Tales? If so, do you think it would be on the DLS or payware on your website? I don't really see myself releasing any of them, unfortunately, sorry, because there's just so many assets and a lot of people have different like policies on releasing their content within roots or dependency packs, 
and I definitely wouldn't want to do payware because I don't want to be selling other people's content without their permission. And this is me just being lazy, but God, it takes forever to package trains routes together. Oh my God, because there's so many dependencies and you have to deal with stuff not wanting to package because then it becomes faulty or open for edit or whatever, whatever else prevents you from packaging it. So un unfortunately, probably not, sorry. But if I ever release anything, just check my Twitter, I'll probably announce it there. The J Train asks, What are your thoughts on Amtrak's soon-to-be newest route between New Orleans and Mobile? I think it's great they're bringing it back, and hopefully it proves to be successful. What are your thoughts on Sonic Frontiers? I think it's the best Sonic game we've gotten since Generations are Unleashed. The open world and combat was a refreshing change of pace from the boost stuff. The cyberspace levels were kinda eh, especially the 2D sections, but they weren't anything like horrible or nothing. The combat is fine, the combos are a little tricky to pull off since like every button on the controller is being used. I think some more combos would have been interesting. Uh, I also wish there was more like momentum based gameplay in the open world, like being able to use the spin dash and shoot off from a ledge or whatever and get to a higher place. You can kind of do that, but it's not like as organic as the adventure games. But the writing and all of the callbacks and the tone of the story being kind of like how it was back in the 2000s was a great change from what we've gotten in previous games. I'm really hoping they stick with the characterization, the tone, going forward. Sage was a great addition to the cast, and seeing a different side of Eggman towards the end was really interesting to see. I'd give it like a 9 out of 10. With how well Sonic Frontiers sold and the positive reception it got, I'm hoping that tells Sega and Sonic Team to continue down the route that they are right now. Do you have any plans for any more of the Trains Up videos? Yeah, I'm thinking of making the Trains of Yakuza probably after Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth comes out. And then I'm also wanting to do one on the Red Dead games and GTA. Have your views on the Class 1 railroads changed ever since the planned strikes and the derailment in Ohio? Not really, they're just the same corporate railroads to me that they were before. Thoughts on the Super Mario Bros. movie? It was amazing. I loved the animation, the humor was great. The character designs were really good, surprisingly. The voice cast was all pretty fitting. Chris Pratt's voice took a little bit getting used to, but I think it's just because Mario has had Charles Martinet voicing him since practically the very beginning with a couple of early exceptions. But yeah, the animation was really well done. It was very expressive. Yeah, the pacing was pretty fast, but like, I don't think a Mario movie needs to be super long because the games were never really about a big, deep plot or nothing. Not to say that Mario can't have a decent story, but I just don't really think that's what the focus should have been. But all of the callbacks, too, and like, the references, those were so cool, especially as a lifelong Mario fan. They really did a great job paying tribute to the fans and showing what Mario's all about. I'm hoping the future movies are going to be even better than the first. Matt7842 asks, Trains? Trains, trains, and more trains. Do you have a least favorite railroad and or video game, and if so, what is it? I don't really think I have a least favorite railroad, but I definitely have my least favorite video games. One of them being Sonic Forces. The game isn't broken or glitchy or whatever. There was just a lot of missed potential and they just went really safe on the whole idea of Eggman actually conquering the world. And the level design is just incredibly boring. Very hard question. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks, you too. Responsible Nerve asks, What's your bucket list rail journey? One train I'd really like to ride is the Empire Builder. It sounds like the scenery on the route's really nice. I think it'd be cool to see it in the fall or the winter time. I'd also like to be able to ride like a Japanese maglev, the Trans-Siberian uh, Railway, or some kind of like mainline uh, steam excursion. Oh, another one would be like using, I think it's the USA Rail Pass Amtrak has. I, I think they still have that, I don't know. And ride across the entire US by train, that would be really cool. Snoopy HF asks, How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> one! 
Did you notice the teleported bread in your house soldier sent you? What? Alright, well there's another very delayed Q&A done. I should really get better at releasing these sooner. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for all of your comments. Uh, sorry I can't get to all of them, otherwise we'd be here all day. I like doing these Q&As every year because it gives more people the chance to have their questions answered, gives me an opportunity to look back on my previous Q&As to see how my opinions have changed, and generally these are just kind of fun to edit and put together. There will be another one next year, and occasionally I will maybe host an impromptu Q&A session on Twitter and Instagram, so follow me there if you haven't already. Apart from that though, that's all for me, so thank you so much for sticking around to the end if you did, and thanks for watching in general. And also thank you to my channel members. Special thanks to Grand Canyon Studios, Tommy Rosini, and Mooter for subscribing to the Conductor tier. And I'll see you in another video.